Welcome to Genesis Unleashed. Today we're asking, who wrote Genesis? spiritually and theologically deadly idea mm. called the JEDP hypothesis denying that Moses had anything to do with writing Genesis is, is based on bad scholarship. Is, it's, it's still widely being taught to future Christian leaders. Exactly. Nearly all liberal Bible colleges and seminaries, and sadly, uh, some which profess conservative That's right. evangelical yeah. uh, doctrine, teach the documentary hypothesis, also known as the JED, uh, JEDP hypothesis. So, so, so what is this documentary hypothesis? Well, this is, it's a liberal, liberal it's a critical view which denies that Moses wrote Genesis to Deuteronomy. Right. It teaches that various anonymous authors compiled these five books, uh, plus uh, other portions from, uh, of the Old Testament, from centuries of oral tradition up to 900 years after Moses lived, if in this view he even, it's questionable, <laughs> did he even exist? That's a, that's a question that they're asking as well. Uh, these, these hypothetical narrators are designated as follows. Now, J, standing for what the documentary hypothesis would term Yahwist, supposedly lived about 900 to 850 BC. He, she, they, whatever, allegedly gathered the myths and legends of Babylon, ancient Babylon and other nations, and added them to the sort of campfire stories of the Hebrews, producing those biblical passages where the Hebrew letters YHWH, or Yahweh, or, or Jehovah, are used for the name of God. So where you see that, that's the J narrator person. Now E, standing for Elohist, supposedly lived about 750 to 700 BC in the northern kingdom, that's Israel, and wrote passages, wrote those passages where you see Elohim, and, and where that's used for the word of God. So, and uh, the next one is D. D supposedly wrote most of Deuteronomy, probably uh, the, the, found the, the book in found that book in the temple in Jerusalem in 621 BC. You, you read about that in 2 Kings 22.8. P supposedly represents a priest or priests, a group of priests perhaps, who lived during the exile in Babylon and allegedly composed a code of holiness for the people. Then uh, they also add an R that's often added as well that supposedly refers to various editors R from the German redactor uh, supposedly put it all together. That's, that's the idea. <laughs> right. Now the idea of multiple authorship uh, of these books was first proposed by Jean Ostrich in Paris in 1753. However, the foremost uh, exponent was Julius Wellhausen and he restated uh, the documentary hypothesis in terms of the evolutionary view of history oh, here we go which again. was prevalent in the philosophical circles at the time. So he claimed that those parts of the Old Testament that dealt with a sophisticated doctrine, one God, the Ten Commandments, the tabernacle, these sophisticated things, okay. were not truth revealed by the living God, but were ideas that evolved from lower stages of thinking, including polytheism, animism, ancestral worship, etc. Hence the need right. uh, to, to find uh, or, or, or fabricate later authors. Now, one of the main arguments uh, was that writing had supposedly not been invented at the time of Moses. So this is proof that it happened at a later time. Right, so thus the documentary hypothesis undermines the authenticity of Genesis, uh, creation, the fall, the flood accounts, right. as well as the whole patriarchal history of Israel. Right. It, it presupposes that the whole Old Testament is one gigantic literary fraud and, and calls into question not only the integrity of Moses, but also the trustworthiness or the, the, the divinity of Christ, of right. Jesus. No wonder the critics have embraced it so warmly. Yeah. Uh, what, what's surprising is how many uh, so-called conservative theologians have also embraced it. Yeah, it's crazy. So was Moses J-E-D 
P or R? Yeah, right. Answer, he was none of the above. <laughs> Rather, Moses himself was both writer and editor of the Pentateuch. And these five books were composed by him in about 1400 BC, not by unknowns at the time of the exile. Now, this doesn't mean that Moses did not use other written sources available to him, and we're going to talk about that in a bit. Or that he wrote the last verses of, of Deuteronomy 34 uh, that record his death, of course. Uh, rabbinic Jewish tradition has always uh, been that they were added under divine inspiration by Joshua. There's no external evidence at all in support of a J-E-D-P or R. I mean, what were their names? What else did these uh, literally, uh, literary savants write? Uh, history, uh, he <laughs> Hebrew, secular, they know nothing of them. Right, they yeah. exist only in the fertile imaginations of the inventors of the documentary hypothesis. Now, on the other hand, the evidence that Moses wrote the Pentateuch, often referred to in the Bible as the law or the, the Torah in the Hebrew, yeah. is overwhelming. <laughs> there, there are five things that strongly support Mosaic authorship. Number one, contrary to the views of Wellhausen and others, archaeological research has established that writing was indeed well known in Moses' day. Yeah, that was one of their main, the, the, main premises. It was, yeah. The JEDP, the Documentary Hypothesis, falsely assumes that the Israelites waited until many centuries after the foundation of their nation before committing any of their history or laws to written form. Even though th their neighbors kept written records of their own history yeah. and religion from before the time of Moses. Right. Uh, two, the author uh, is obviously an eyewitness of the exodus from Egypt, familiar with the geography, right. the flora, the fauna of the region. He uses several Egyptian words, uh, refers to customs that go back to the second uh, millennium BC. So obviously the writer, uh, Moses, would have been familiar with what the Egyptians... Yes, of course, yeah. <laughs> Number three, within the Pentateuch, in many places, it indicates that Moses was the writer. Right. Now, when people write letters or emails and include their, their name at the bottom, it's an excellent indication that that person wrote the text. Yeah, right? why so, doubt them unless you have good reasons here? Exactly. Um, four, outside of the Pentateuch, many times in the rest of the Old Testament, Moses is said to have been the writer. Yes. Clearly, the writers of those uh, other books held to Mosaic authorship. Right. Uh, number five, in the New Testament, Jesus frequently spoke of Moses' writings or the law of Moses. Jesus said that those who, uh, who hear not, uh, or, or that is reject Moses, would not be persuaded though one rose from the dead. Right. In Luke 16, 31, we read that. Thus we see that those churches and seminaries that reject the historicity of Moses' writings often also reject the literal bodily resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus right. made that connection right there. And so for evangelicals to be accepting this, it's, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's, it's crazy. Really. Yeah. 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 So, uh, uh, of course, other New Testament speakers, writers said the same thing. Moses is the author yes. uh, uh, of the Pentateuch, right? Another support for, for Mosaic authorship. Right. Now, now, does that mean that, that Moses wrote Genesis without reference to any previous information? Right. No, not, not necessarily. That's not what we're saying. Yeah. Genesis comprises narratives of historical events that occurred before Moses, yeah. before he was born, long before he was born, yeah. uh, Moses may very well have had access to patriarchal records and or reliable oral traditions right. of those events. In that case, such records would have, would have certainly been preserved by, by, by writing, probably on clay tablets, that's the way they used to do it a long time ago, yeah. and handed down from father to son, from family to family, via the line of uh, you know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and so on. You start right. with the, through the flood with Noah and Shem. There are 11 verses in Genesis that read, these are, or this is the book of, the generations of. There's 11 yeah. statements like that. The Hebrew word toledoth translates generations, uh, the, uh, translated gener that, that's, that's the word for generations, mm -hmm. can also mean origins or history uh, or, even, or even family history. Uh, and each verse comes either before or after a description of the historical events in, that involved the person that's named. That's right. This is the generation of so-and-so. The most likely explanation is that Adam, Noah, Shem, etc., each wrote an account of the events that occurred either right before or during his lifetime. Right. And, and Moses, it's kind of like a signature almost, mm -hmm. uh, or a heading, that kind of thing. Under Moses, same thing with Moses, under the infallible inspiration of the Holy Spirit, selected, compiled, and edited these to produce Genesis, it's in its, its current, present, cohesive form. Exactly. 
Now, Gen Genesis doesn't show uh, a progress from idolatry to mon monotheism or as, as Wellhausen's uh, evolutionary uh, you know, right. scale requires. Yeah. It shows that the Bible begins with an, an original revelation from God, right, of God, which was later rejected uh, to the point that the Hebrew nation itself descended into idolatry yes. and so was given over to captivity by God. It's, it's completely reversed from what these critics were saying. Right. Yeah. So what about the, the different words used for God? That right. was one of the big deals, uh, big issues there. Yeah. And here it helps to distinguish between names and titles. Now in Genesis chapters 1 and 2, the word Elohim is used for God 25 times. That word describes an, an awesome and faithful being having creative and governing power and majesty and omnipotence who's above the material world he created. It's, it's a lofty title. It's a title. It equals God. Right. It, it's, it's a title. It's like I'm, I'm the CEO of the Canadian office. That's, that's my title. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, it, it's an appropriate word for Moses to have used for the first factual report of God's creative activities. Now, in Genesis chapter 2, from verse 4 on, the Hebrew uses the letters YHWH, or Yahweh, to refer to God, sometimes translated Jehovah. Uh, it's more often translated Lord in small capitals in our, in our modern translations. And is most common, it's the most, common used, most commonly used term for God in the Old Testament. Now, that, that occurs, believe it or not, 6,823 6, times. It means the one who always was, now is, and ever shall be. And it's a deeply personal name of God. So that my name's Richard, and I have a title and a name. So it, it, it's therefore used in his personal and covenant relationships with his people. Beginning at Genesis 2 verse 4, we read a more detailed account of how God made Adam and Eve and the setting he prepared for them, the details about the world before it was corrupted by sin, etc. Here, they were meant to live and work in a loving covenantal fellowship with him and each other. It was entirely appropriate, therefore, that Moses should have used that YHW, Yahweh, Jehovah, in writing this section of Genesis. In Genesis 2, Yahweh is joined to Elohim to form a compound name, Yahweh Elohim, often rendered in our modern Bibles, our English Bibles, Lord God. This identifies the covenant God, Yahweh, as being one and the same Elohim, the Almighty Creator. There's, there's no logical reason, particularly when examining the terms used for God, to ascribe this account to any other author or, author or a, multiple, a group of authors. Right. It was logical, the, the names he chose for Absolutely. God. Absolutely, right? yeah. The same principles apply in the rest of Genesis and throughout the Old Testament. This JDP uh, system, it's self-contradictory. Uh, it's, it, it's, its proponents actually need to break verses into sections or, or even credit parts of sentences, right, that, that use one or more term for God yeah. to different writers. Right. Yeah. That, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, you know, this hodgepodge that would be quite unique in, in, in ancient Middle Eastern literature. We don't see that anywhere else. So the scholarship used to promote this documentary hypothesis, it would be laughed out of court if it was applied to any other book. And right. yet, of course, the critics want to want to criticize the Bible. Yeah. So the conclusion here is that ultimately the author of Genesis was God working through Moses. This does not mean that Mo God used Moses as kind of like a typewriter, <laughs> rather that God prepared Moses for his task from the day he was born. When the time came, Moses had all the necessary data and was, of course, infallibly guided by the Holy Spirit as to what he included and what he left out. This is, is totally consistent with known history it, it, and, and the claims and the principles of Scripture found, for example, in 2 Timothy 3, 15 to 17 and, and 2 Peter 2, 1, 20 and 21. On the other hand, there's no historical evidence and no <laughs> spiritual or theological basis whatsoever for this deceptive JEDP, the, the documentary hypothesis. Its teaching is completely false. Yeah. It promotes a, a bogus scholarship yeah. uh, propped up by the theory of evolution. It exists solely to undermine the authority of the Word of God. Exactly. Yeah, if you've ever been taught that, you might want to re-examine it. Yeah. Now, by the way, computer testing actually agrees. Um, Genesis had one author. Um, here's a following quote from, the, from Omni magazine of August 1982. 
After feeding the 20,000 Hebrew words of Genesis into a computer at Technion University in Israel, researchers found many sentences that ended in verbs and numerous words of six characters or more. Because these idiosyncratic patterns appear again and again, says project director Yehuda Rade, it seems likely that a sole author was responsible. Their exhaustive computer analysis conducted in Israel suggests that an 82% probability that the book had just one author. I'd say 100% because the Bible says that it was Moses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but there, uh, but there's another evidence yes. that uh, that favors that Moses wrote it, and yeah. it's just one more confirmation that we can trust the Bible as the Word of God. Yeah. That Genesis is not some polemic produced by a committee. <laughs> um, for more information. Be sure to check out the articles in this video's description below here. Uh, they will take you to the world's one-stop source for reliable, peer-reviewed information on Genesis. You can find that at creation.com.